Thank you, distinguished participants. It's really a pleasure to be here in Mongolia, and I would like to join my executive director in thanking the government of Mongolia for such a warm hospitality. We are here today to celebrate the launch of the Hub. We are very excited about the future collaboration ahead of us with MNCCI. Um, and let me ask the speakers to join me on stage. Um, I will introduce them one by one. Uh, Bagalio Chuku, please join me. She's an accomplished business development specialist and gender advocate. In 2019, she became the first female vice president of MNCCI. Congratulations. She has extensive experience on women entrepreneurship, multilateral cooperation, and uh, the creative industry. She's also a businesswoman. She's the CEO of Safe Tech and Seal and the founding partner of UL Trade. And since 2016, she's the president of the Mongolian chapter of the International Women's Federation of Commerce and Industry. Thank you for joining us today. Our second speaker is uh, Koliswa Daku. She's a successful leader in business and in the legal world and a governance specialist. She's the founder and CEO of Daku Limited, a 20-year-old privately held entity focused on property, law and energy. She describes her vision for property development as developing corridors of excellence, turning small towns into economic hubs and redevelop underutilized properties all over South Africa. Kolisa has served on various boards and she's now chair of the Small Enterprise Development Agency, the host of the South African Sheet Rates Hub. Thank you for joining us today. Our third speaker is Therese Sekamana, whom you have known, you have met already. She's the and founder of Lead Solutions and Green Energy Rwanda, uh, a renewable energy company which introduced uh, LED lights in the country in 2018 and has now 25 years uh, per PPA with the government of Rwanda for two hydropower plants. She's also the chairperson of the special cluster on women, youth and persons with disability at the Private Sector Foundation, the host institution of the Sheet Rates Hub in Rwanda. Our fourth speaker is Hélène Konkiewicz, the senior international development professional with 20 years of experience in human rights, rule of law, gender mainstreaming, and democrat democratic institution building. Hélène has joined UADP as resident representative of Mongolia in 2019, and before this, she served as UN Women Representative in Kazakhstan and as director at the OSHA Mission in Kosovo. Thanks for joining us today. And last but not least, Opia Bebe, she's the head of the Trade Competitiveness Section of the Commonwealth Secretariat, where she oversees technical assistance to 18 countries and four regional trade support projects in Asia and the ACP regions. She previously managed a USAID-funded program in uh, focusing on MSMEs in Nigeria and led on the implementation of AGOA with the Nigerian Export Promotion Council. Thank you very much. Okay, does it work? Okay. So thanks to all of our speakers. We are going to have an exciting discussion today, not only to celebrate the launch of the Sheet Rates Hub in Mongolia, but also to learn from each other. We have uh, particularly two uh, colleagues who did a long journey to join us in Mongolia to share their experiences from Rwanda and South Africa. Um, as well as other colleagues from UNDP and the Commonwealth Secretariat to share their experiences and um, also tell us a bit how they can support the hub in Mongolia. So we will have two rounds of questions today. Let me start with the first one for you, by Ali. Uh, MNCCI boasts over a thousand women-led businesses as members of uh, MNCCI and has been implementing a number of initiatives to support women entrepreneurs. What has been the experience in promoting women entrepreneurship? What are you doing today? Thanks. Thank you, Judith. 
and distinguished guests, international delegates, and ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Mongolia. And first of all, on behalf of the Mongolian National Chamber of Commerce and Industry, we would like to express our sincere gratitude for your invaluable efforts in organizing a world expert um, development forum in Mongolia. And uh, I'm Baigal, and, and uh, Judith mentioned about that I'm the first female vice president of the Mongolian National Chamber of Commerce and Industry. And that means and Chamber of Commerce has been uh, have to uh, supporting human empowerment. And um, so I have my some notes. And it's interesting to point out that women comprise a significant uh, portion of uh, Mongolia's small and medium enterprises, which is uh, approximately 68 to 70 percent of all uh, small medium enterprises, also 24 points uh, of the top 100 enterprises in the country are now led by women. In 2021, a groundbreaking initiative was uh, undertaken in collaboration with the National Chamber and uh, with the National Statute Committee, resulting in the uh, organization of the first ever gender-sensitive enterprise census. And according to the census, 40% of the all actively operating uh, enterprises in Mongolia have female directors now. And first of all, it was uh, also uh, revealed that 87% of enterprises with female directors fall under the category of uh, micro enterprises, employing up to 10 individuals. So we have uh, actively implemented numerous events, projects, and programs in collaboration with the international and local organizations and international and domestic donors and to support women entrepreneurs. This includes a, with, um, a range of responsibility, such as promoting uh, uh, responsible entrepreneurship, uh, ensuring gender equality, and supporting and encouraging women entrepreneurs facilitating knowledge exchange, also expanding business opportunities, fostering new partnerships, so also providing guidance and advocating for uh, support uh, policies. More, uh, moreover, um, we are proud to contribute to the empowerment of uh, women in business sector, uh, and they remain committed to fostering an inclusive and supportive environment for women enterprise in Mongolia. So uh, there's some major initiatives I'll um, share with you. And recent years uh, include, for the past 24 years, the Business Academy is like division of the National Chamber of Commerce Industry and been the, um, diligently arranging capacity building training programs for foreign trade managers. So expanding up in the initiatives taken last year, the academic currently coordinating specialized the export manager training. So session is specialized like tailored for women entrepreneurs. Uh, the primary objective of this program is to empower uh, women entrepreneurs to actively engage in the foreign markets and then enhance their competitiveness levels. So last year in May, uh, 2022, also uh, National Chamber of Commerce arranged a collaborated meeting with the involved over uh, 30 government and non government uh, international organizations dedicated to supporting women entrepreneurs. This meeting uh, aimed to dive uh, deeper into the most common uh, challenges that faced by women entrepreneurs and gather comprehensive quantitative data. So this was particularly necessary, uh, necessary because of our country lacks uh, detailed gender-specific information in both uh, official and unofficial business uh, registration databases. So also last year, 2022, uh, we successfully held the uh, Enhancing Women Participation Economic Development Forum under the uh, pastoralage of the President of Mongolia. And this conference uh, gathered business women representatives from all over to Mongolia and 21 provinces. And over gathered 800 more uh, women entrepreneurs participated. It was really successful <laughs> uh, forum. And uh, of course, 
the uh, National Chamber of Commerce, the operating within the uh, uh, Business Women's Council uh, and consistently advocates for policy improvements to strengthen the legal framework uh, supporting women entrepreneurs. Of course, the, through the Adjust uh, Women Ethics Center, and as uh, Mr. Duran mentioned about that, the, our few initiatives, and we are implementing measures to promote the significance of women participation in the role model in the business ethics. So, emphasizing that ethical business practices are sustainable and lead to long-term profitability and the increased the productivity. Additionally, Mongolian National Chamber of Commerce and Industry organized the various training and sessions to enhance entrepreneurs' skills and provide them the crucial information on a regular basis. Thank you very Thank you. much. I can really see how the She Trades Hub can really uh, work with you to scale up the work you have done and especially to bring women to the next level in terms of international markets and I would also like to congratulate you for all the work you have done on the data side because not many countries have actually invested in gender sensitive um, survey of businesses. The power of data is very familiar with the work we do in ITC. We know very well that it's very difficult to tackle the barriers you can't count, you can't see. Um, so congratulations again. I'm sure this is already a best practice you can share with some of our hubs across the globe. Um, let me move to Koliswa. Um, South Africa is host to one of the most active hubs in the global network with 3,000 women registered on the platform. Um, can you tell us a bit about how, what SIDA is doing to support uh, women in trade in South Africa? Thank you. Thank you, Judith. Thank you very much. And uh, let me also start by congratulating Mongolia for the launch and welcome to the family. Yes, indeed. I think uh, to put it into context, um, CEDA it is indeed a small enterprise development agency, which is an entity of the small business development um, department uh, in South Africa. So by default, our mandate is focusing specifically on the establishment and as well as also the development of businesses, uh, especially small businesses within the country. So it was quite uh, aligned for she trades to be within our institution because with that mandate, our key focus is then to customize programs for SMEs. And when it comes to um, CEDA and she trades, our aim and what we actually have within our program is the export readiness uh, program, which we run uh, specifically uh, within uh, CEDA. So that program focuses on training. Uh, it focuses on assessment and the key area, which I'm sure we can chat about it as we move along, quality assurance of these SMMEs to access uh, the market, whether it's local or international. And I think the best uh, collaboration when it comes to this will be then to say the information, uh, the training, market access, and as well as also development. But if you ask me what then with what we are doing are the key challenges. As much as we are doing our best to develop these SMMEs, continuation with regards to how the country is spread, because South Africa is a rural, indeed, um, country, and as well as also we are a developing nation uh, post-apartheid. Um, so we still face challenges with regards to information, and specifically institutional development. So that is where most of our focus currently with regards to sheet trades um, is on, and we continue to ensure that the program uh, grows. But you've mentioned the fact that there's also some significant uh, inroads with regards to the program, whereby 3,004 within a year have registered within the program, and 291 of them already qualify. Uh, with that uh, being said, um, we believe that uh, better strides must be done to customize the program specifically uh, for women in South Africa. So I think that would be specifically the work that we are doing. If there's anything else that we need to mention, I'm not a long speaker, I'm a lawyer, so we go straight to the point. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I think you raised uh, an excellent point, which is really 
the Shitrate Hub's Ara Global Network, where we promote peer-to-peer -peer learning and learning from each other. But the solutions have to be country-specific to the realities and the priorities of each government, of each uh, chamber of commerce and other stakeholders and the women entrepreneurs themselves. So thank you for raising this very good point. Um, now on to our next speaker, Therese, as chairperson of uh, PSF, a uh, specialized cluster and host institution of the She Trades Hub. Um, what are you doing to support women in trade in Rwanda? And what are the key lessons you would want to share with our new hub, with our new member of the family? Thank you, Judith, and welcome to the family because uh, the ITC She Trade is a family. Uh, what we are doing in Rwanda is a she trade hub. First, we did create a space for women where they are comfortable, they are among themselves. It's the first partnership or network among themselves. Then there is the peer learning where they share experience, they share the difficulties, they are, whatever they are doing, they share in a very comfortable way because it's the comfort zone then on the technical side we have computers everyone said it the world is going digital so we have 40 computers with internet and they can access internet for free so it's much easier to access the training we we can access the itc she trade uh, bunch of training where they can learn on how to go for trade internationally, then we do assist them to get the different licenses or certification because each country has his own um, conditions to export. And after that, once they have everything, we try to bring some partners, many the banks, to explain which kind of product they have, how can they access the the money which is there, which is available. There is an agency, it's a government agency called BDF, it's a fund which has been put in place to cover 75% of the collateral. But sometimes women, they don't even, they, they are not ready to access that collateral. And we are still facing issues. Today we have someone seated in the hub. To, to assist people to, to be ready to access the fund. Then we work with different ministries, like uh, the Ministry of Commerce, to train our, our members to be ready for FCFTA, the common market in Africa, which is, which is going on, in fact. Uh, the, gen, the Ministry of Gender and Family to know as well. There is a lot of information to share. Um, National Council of Women and other partners. Uh, what else we do? Yeah, I think it's already a lot about it. Thank you very much. You mentioned partners uh, quite often during your intervention, and I think this is critical because one of the objectives of establishing a cheat rates hub is really to set up a community of partners where other UN agency, financial institutions, uh, um, corporates, um, governments, government agencies can really come together and join forces to improve the ecosystem for, for women entrepreneurs. Um, and speaking of which, uh, I'm now giving Sorry the Sorry to, yes. to cut. There is another point which is really important. Once they are ready, it's the explosion. They go for trade fair, being in uh, the region or international and ICT she trade really do support. Being The last one was in Spain. So it's important to Excellent. mention that. Thank you. Thank you for complimenting. Elaine, over to you. Speaking of uh, the importance of partnerships with the hubs, you, UNDP, I'm sure, will be a key alliance partner for the hub in Mongolia. So could you tell us a bit about your successful programs in Mongolia to support women entrepreneurship? Thank you very much. Uh, very pleasure to be here uh, as well. Um, at UNDP Mongolia, we work at different levels to support uh, women as entrepreneurs. At the local level, we're working in connection uh, with our projects in the field, uh, in the IMAGs and the provinces, to particularly support female herders. 
Um, so on the one hand, uh, female herders are very often not recognized as herders. Uh, so we're doing a lot of awareness raising about that and the importance that they can contribute to the, the local economy. And concretely, what we've done, for example, in Arhangai province is helped uh, female uh, herder groups to upscale and upskill, uh, particularly in the dairy sector, so that they can begin to open their own businesses or enhance uh, the dairy products or come up with new dairy products that would be valuable not only on the local market, but also uh, being delivered to local schools or hospitals and things like that. So um, we are also trying to do this connection of supporting women entrepreneurs at the local level in connection with our climate change work and uh, natural uh, resource management protection work uh, to make the interlinkages between them so that, that women can uh, have uh, beneficial economic uh, activities and income, but also that are benefiting the local communities, but doing it in a, in a green way as well, um, an environmentally friendly way. So that's one concrete thing that we do uh, at local level. Uh, at more national level, uh, we are very engaged in policy discussion with, with the government. Um, on gender equality issues. Uh, we support the um, financial sector in the sense of making it uh, gender, uh, gender mainstream. So as part of our integrated national financing framework work, uh, helping the Ministry of Finance to develop the integrated national financing framework, uh, we did a couple of initiatives. One which is uh, to do a gender assessment of the financial sector and provide uh, financial institutions with the ability to do uh, a gender assessment and a tool, uh, which will help them not only in their own internal assessment, for example, banks, financial institutions, uh, to assess their capacities, but also so they can target the um, um, financial instruments they're offering uh, directly for the benefit of female entrepreneurs and female business, uh, business uh, leaders uh, and women also geared for small and medium enterprises. Um, at the policy level as well, we also help to support uh, development of a gender bond framework here uh, and doing training uh, for uh, non-financial institutions in that as well, because that will also help with the enabling environment for uh, women's uh, businesses going forward. Because very often women here are engaged in the informal sector uh, or in the micro and small medium enterprises. And through this policy work and enabling environment, we really wish to uh, give them further opportunities to grow their business, have bigger business, and not always be stuck, you know, at the, at the small and, or even micro and small and uh, medium enterprise. Um, and then I want to mention a couple of kind of indirectly related things, which I think are also important. Um, because we are working to support women in decision making, uh, and uh, Her Excellency uh, Minister Bogantuya mentioned, and it was also mentioned in the opening remarks uh, from the ITC Executive Director about the change in the, the amendments to the electoral legislation to increase women in, in decision making in the parliament. This is also equally very important. I, I very much want to emphasize uh, the, the role that that will play in also supporting uh, women in business and women entrepreneurs by having better representation, not only at the national level, but also at the local level in uh, decision making. And one other area that I think we're, uh, that is also important that people may not think about as much is uh, the awareness raising and really working to tackle gender stereotypes. This is something that we're doing across a number of our uh, initiatives uh, externally with our partners but also internally in our own office, as the executive director of um, ITC said, they're, they're doing it themselves, you're doing it yourselves, we're also doing it internally in UNDP, and very pleased that we are uh, bringing men into the discussion. I think this is very important, not only women having to uh, support themselves, uh, but also um, ensuring that men are also part of the discussion. And I'm gonna embarrass my colleagues here now because very proud that we have of our UNDP office here, three males that were sitting in a row, the other ones around somewhere, um, who are here to support this event. So I want people to applaud you as men supporting uh, the She Trades Hub, um, because that is also equally important that we uh, have men on board and understanding also for taking care of the family and supporting women in their uh, entrepreneurship and in their business. Um, 
So those are just some of the areas that UNDP is involved to support women entrepreneurs in Mongolia. Hello. So thank you very much. It's really impressive to hear how you're really working from the grassroots level with more marginalized groups of women to the top level, really changing policies, policy frameworks, and, and also shifting mindsets and walking the talk within your own organizations. Um, talking of government policies, let us now give the floor to our uh, last speaker in the panel, um, Opiemi, the Commonwealth Secretariat has been doing very, has been running very successful programs to mainstream gender into trade policies. Uh, you have experienced in many countries across the globe. Could you share with us some of the two uh, top best practices for governments? Um, thank you, uh, first of all, for having us on this panel. Um, Mongolia is not a Commonwealth country, obviously, but we're glad to be here because it's the world export development forum and allow me to also congratulate uh, mongolia on the launch of the she trades uh, program so um, one of the benefits i'm not even sure if it's a benefit or a disadvantage of speaking last is that you somehow have to pick up on what some people have said already because it's all in the same space so if you ask me uh, what are two recommendations that i'd give to policymakers on how to mainstream gender uh, in trade policies I would say um, the first thing I would recommend, which is something you already touched on, Elaine, is the need to do or to conduct uh, gender input assessments before a policy is implemented. Sometimes uh, gender input assessments are done after the policy is already in play, uh, but at that time, then you're trying to find mitigation to some of the impacts that would already have taken place. Um, I think that one of the best practices that we've seen is where before a policy or strategy is, in, is put in place, there is an assessment on how that policy, that trade policy or trade regulation would impact on female entrepreneurs in particular. And I think this is important, I mean, in the moment where we are in Mongolia right now, actually, because I understand that over, the, I mean, in the next two days, we will be talking about uh, putting in place an export strategy. Uh, for Mongolia. So my question is, in thinking about this national export strategy, has there been some consideration on the gender impact of that export strategy, on the sectors where women would benefit the most from, on the kind of programs that need to be included in that export strategy to ensure that it translates to uh, economic empowerment for the women? And if that has not been done, perhaps they need to also make sure that that is done in the first instance. And why is uh, an input assessment important? I said I was going to give an example of one of the countries where we were working on. Uh, and this country has a very big textile industry, uh, but obviously because of imports from outside of the country, the textile industry uh, was essentially folding up and was in crisis. And so the government took a decision to place a ban on textiles, importation of textiles, blanket ban. Now, when this ban was put in place, it was hailed by the industry as something good uh, because they thought it would give room for the local textile industry to flourish. But what had not been considered was the impact of that ban on female entrepreneurs because it turned out that many of the women in the country were in the apparel sector. They make clothes, they make uh, you know, fabrics, they make all kinds of you know, clothes for export and for domestic use. When the ban was put in place, essentially the government had cut off the source of the raw materials that the women entrepreneurs needed for their sector. That was one impact. The second thing that had happened was that in the industries where companies were exporting apparel, many women were the employees in that industry. Like in most countries, Bangladesh, wherever you have apparel, big apparel producing countries, it's a known fact that women are the ones who work mostly in this, uh, as machinists in those, I mean, those sectors. Then the second impact we saw was that because the raw materials had been cut short, the apparel industry was folding up, the women in those sectors were losing their jobs in droves because the government did not think through the impact of that one policy. And so this is just an example of why um, we advocate as gender 
uh, uh, practitioners that while trade policy in and of itself might not be gen might be gender neutral, the impact on women is never neutral. And so I would recommend that countries, governments, and Mongolia is in a good place to do that before the new export strategy. And the second thing I would say is something again that everyone has said over the last two days, participation. When countries are developing trade policies or strategies, um, the national machineries that are set in place, whether that is a focal group, whatever, to discuss or to put in place these uh, policies or strategies as the case may be, are usually made up of uh, representation from the trade-related agencies. Um, I would encourage that in Mongolia and in other countries, when trade policies are being drafted, there must be a deliberate uh, effort to bring in participation from women uh, 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 ministries, women-led agencies, because it gives a, a different lens to the conversations that take place before that policy is drafted. So for me, those two things, please uh, do a gender import assessment, and secondly, participation. Let women be involved in the conversation from the get-go, and we would start to see outcomes that are better for women entrepreneurs. Thank you very much for those inspiring words. <laughs> Thank you. We are now approaching the end of the panel, so I would like to ask you one last question, and I would kindly ask you to be concise because we only have approximately two minutes each to respond. Um, Kolizwa, over to you. Uh, key lessons uh, from your experience for the Mongolian Hub, please. Thank you very much. I'm a very short speaker. But I think there are two key areas uh, that we need to take note of. Um, uh, we have the policies. I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about our policies. But just to mention, there's what we have now, the National Integrated uh, Support Enterprise Development Master Plan, which specifically is targeted at, at entrepreneurship and as well as also the growth of small businesses. With that having uh, mentioned uh, that the, e the key thing is that that policy targets integration and collaboration. And that's exactly what we are dealing with with regards to, to, to sheet trades when we're looking at, at key lessons. Maybe we should look at what we call, in our case, um, your, your, the integration. CEDA has got 800 staff members. Uh, 52 branches, and as well as also we've got 100 business advisors. So the critical thing is then to ensure that sheet trades is integrated into that ecosystem. That is outside your provincial agencies and export-related activities within South Africa. So that's our mission now, to make sure that the program is fully integrated through actually people understanding what its purpose is and promoting it for the betterment of it. The second part is the collaboration. When we look at collaboration, for us, it's about resources. So we've got to ensure that there's adequate resources within the program. So if you're looking at it uh, from that perspective, so within the ecosystem, there are partners that we need to approach. Uh, my sister here from Rwanda spoke about the banks, and we could safely say that there's partnerships outside our country with the likes of APSA, whereas it's our own bank, so we need to ensure that uh, she trades bring that closer to, to ourselves. But also, we can positively say that we've also mastered uh, the, the, the collaboration by working with EU, and for them to give us $250,000 um, uh, um, with regards to support, and we are now having these women being part of the integrated program with regards to the EU program. But with that having uh, been said, you've got a program that you've actually done for us, which is train the trainer. We believe that that needs to be done more efficiently and effectively to that ecosystem that we have. And, and on top of that, the e-commerce uh, training as well will play a critical role in terms of the digital transformation amongst the women's networks and association. As a result, in September, we've made it our mission to hold uh, what we would call a round table, just to focus on sheet trades and the network that we have to ensure that this program is integrated into their plans. Thanks.
Thank you. Therese, I'll, I'll now ask you to put on your hat as CEO and private sector person. Um, most programs on women entrepreneurship tend to focus in two sectors where women are present. You have yourself broken into a male-dominated sector, the energy sector, and a fast-growing one, the renewable one. So the key message is, how do we get more women into male-dominated sector? Thank you. I think uh, I'm going to talk about two things. To be resilient, focus, know your goals, and do whatever you can do to get there. The second thing, I said it, and I'll never say it, say it enough, it's quality of whatever you are doing. It's, it's really key. This morning, we were talking about green trading, we were talking about uh, all those things. It's about quality. So if I stack on my domain, it's those two things. It's resilience and quality, but this is something you can use in any trading. Women have to know that the same time you spend to grow your product is this put quality on that. Otherwise, you, are, you will not never sustain on the market. Each country has his conditions for export and for import. They will not, never go for your product if you don't fulfill the conditions. And this is a great opportunity talking to she trade Mongolia anyway to access those training which are offered by IPC she trade thank you thank you very much Opeyemi, call for action to government what do you want what would you like governments to do okay thank you again uh, government one of the things that is starting to gain momentum is a conversation around using public procurement as a means to empower women entrepreneurs. Um, it's a conversation that has been starting in different forums because government in many countries are the biggest spenders. And I was glad to hear today that uh, the government of Mongolia has recently uh, set, put in place a law uh, for affirmative action of 30% of women in government by 2024. Perhaps we would also then push for the government to also uh, denote a percentage of every public procurement contract for women entrepreneurs. Imagine if that becomes law, that every contract, I mean, for a percentage of the government procurement is allocated to women entrepreneurs, it would radically change the face of the women entrep entrepreneurship uh, landscape in Mongolia. Uh, and they wouldn't just be dealing with small businesses. We would start to see women really do big things. So public procurement, government key. Um, if we get them in politics, let's also get them in the procurement. Let's get them in the procurement sector. And I think that the next thing I would say, uh, frankly, is that um, I would urge the, the hub to look at the opportunities that exist within the region. And again, this has been said in the last couple of days. Uh, you know that Mongolia has recently acceded to the Asia Pacific uh, Free Trade Agreement. These are quicker wins for you uh, in terms of the opportunities that you have to access the market. And um, the representative from the EU this morning, I remember, said something about uh, the GSP allowances for exports from Mongolia into the EU. Um, I would say build the, help the women to understand, because I think that information on where the market access is sometimes is scarce. And if people don't know that these preferences exist, then they don't know to target them. So perhaps the hub should understand where the market access opportunities have been created uh, and have been already created and see how they can encourage the women to take advantage of it. And lastly, of course, digital trade. E-commerce is one of the quickest way to ensure that uh, we get our women entrepreneurs uh, trading across borders uh, with at least relative ease compared to the cost, the sinking cost of trading goods. And yesterday we talked about digitally delivered services. This is something that I think the women should look very carefully into because the opportunities in that space is quite uh, huge. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Now, uh, just, just a second. <laughs> okay.
talking about uh, male dominated domain yesterday they were talking about the opportunity in energy which are in this country apart from being really welcoming and uh, very kind women in mongolia they are very well educated let them take the opportunity and say think about the legacy you want to leave in this world you have great engineers let them be part of that change women we go into details we do protect our family let's protect our environment thank you <laughs> thank you very much teres <laughs> indeed it was an important message i agree uh, elaine a call uh, to action to undp now uh, what what will undp uh, do to support the ship rates hub in mongolia uh, thank you very much uh, we would like very much i mean to share the best practices and certainly the pilots and the experiences that UNDP has had here with the she trades uh hub and would call upon the hub to really work to upscale those uh i think mongolia is at a very exciting moment in development uh i came here three and a half years uh, ago before covid um and much was closed down during covid but since covid is over and the recovery is there mongolia is literally exploding with opportunity it is so amazing and exciting and women need to be part of that and to be actively engaged in that so we will be certainly working with the she trades hub to uh sponsor and support uh the work that is being done in the sense of really uh getting the word out raising the awareness uh, bringing in women um ensuring that there's a diversity also of women engaged this is also important uh not only rural women uh, urban women uh, also would appreciate uh to some collaboration around uh women with disabilities other disadvantaged groups of of women um that can be equal partners um in the in the she trades hub and then certainly sharing information i mean we we have uh, very good connections with uh, ifis development partners and i think that kind of convening power and role of undp to help to bring the the uh, benefit to the she trades hub in a very horizontal way with a lot of partners um could be very beneficial to the hub as well and last point um because undp is present and working in uh, 170 countries around the world i think sharing the experience and making the linkages with other country offices that undp is working in not only ones where other existing uh she trades uh, hubs exist but more broadly uh for building those linkages and sharing experiences so that the she trades hub can really get off to a a, a very good launch uh and have a uh, accelerate impact for uh women in mongolia thank you thank you very much and now back from where we began <laughs> the start of the show uh the shitrets hub in mongolia um hundreds of stakeholders have reunited to celebrate the launch of the hub so congratulations uh we would like to hear from you why this is important for you and and the call to action what would you like stakeholders online and here in person to do to support you on your important mission thank you again first of all thank you for sharing your best practices and uh, of course we are ready and to collaborate and learn from our sister hubs right <laughs> yeah and of course uh, we greatly appreciate the launch of the 15th she trades hub in mongolia facilitated by the un uh, by the support of the mongolian national chamber of commerce and industry as part of this the international trade uh, center visionary initiative uh, this uh, momentous occasion was a sign uh, of a promising era for female entrepreneurs in mongolia uh, was coming Uh, as it uh, uh, fortifies their capabilities and opens up uh, wide, uh, wider vistas of uh, business investment opportunities, this uh, establishment of this uh, hub is uh, is a uh, testament of our collective commitment of to empowering uh, women and fostering their active participation in the foreign trade within the region, ultimately uh, paving the way. for sustainable economic growth and prosperity in the future the uh shitrays hub stands as a formidable platform enabling women entrepreneurs to forge valuable connections and collaborations uh 
Uh, of course, this dynamic uh, platform unlocks the area of transformative prospects, uh, including expanding their opportunities, maximizing uh, profitabilities, exchanging valuable ex um, uh, experiences, and also facilitating their integration into the global trade market, all through the utilization you know, of cutting-edge cloud technology. So, uh, recognizing the pivotal role of these uh, digital platforms, we underscore the uh, significance empowering uh, women entrepreneurs to access domestic and international markets. Of course, fostering flexible work arrangements and the driving economic growth and competitiveness in the ensuring the enduring uh, gender equality, of course. So we strongly urge women uh, entrepreneurs to bolster their capacity and unite the creating uh, sustainable and environment differently and of course responsible business environment that um, uh, transcends borders and business within the international markets. So finally, so together and let us shape a future and uh, where entrepreneurs know to boundaries in the entire empower women, thrive on the global stage. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. The She Trades Initiative was set up in 2015, and since then we have been working with women entrepreneurs in Latin America, in Asia, and Africa. And the ambition was always not to reduce barriers for women in trade, but to eliminate barriers for women in trade. Uh, the ambition and the goal is really to have a world that creates the same equal opportunity for men and women in trade and in business. This will not be possible without partnership, and this is why from the beginning, from day one, in October 2015, there's always been an effort to do it in partnerships, in partnerships like today with the MNCCI, with SIDA, with PSF, with UNDP, and with the Commonwealth Secretariat. So I would like to thank our partners, our community of passion, passionate, committed uh, individuals and organizations. And I just want to say that I'm sure we'll get there all together. So thanks to the speakers and congratulations again to our new members of the Sheet Red Sub family. <laughs> and see to come back. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Judith, uh, for your moderation and for wonderful discussion. Thank you. And the uh, esteemed guests, uh, thank you very much for your kind attention for the, our launch in Shri Trades Mongolia Hub. And uh, Shri Trades Mongolia Hub uh, looks forward. It looks forward to. Uh, working and uh, partnering with you in advance women and uh, trade uh, agenda in the country. Thank you.